All right, if you're going to be playing the right side of the court in this video, I'm gonna talk about three shots that you're going to have to have dialed in so that you can be a dominant force from the right side of the court. All right, first things first, we're going to talk about the topspin dink. All right, when we get balls on our outside or close to the sideline, as a right-handed player, and if I'm playing the right side of the court, I'm going to get a lot of balls near this sideline because I'm gonna get a lot of balls going cross court from me and also balls from the middle sending me out wide because players are going to try to move me out. So the top spin dink cross court is going to be a shot that you're definitely going to need um, and you're going to have to have if you wanna put maximum pressure on your opponents. So you watch a Thomas Wilson, a Tyson McGuffin, Catherine Peranto and Anna Lee Waters. There's a ton of players that use this thing very, very well. And let's dive into it right now. So the most important thing for your topspin dink is going to be your feet. We have to create enough space and we have to hit it in an ideal position in front of us. So if you can see in this camera here, right, there is a difference between getting your contact point out here and having your contact point out here. So when I am hitting my topspin dink, I have to make sure that I'm actually getting my contact point in between my feet and I have good spacing, okay? So how am I gonna get there with that? Well, it's gonna be my um, shuffle step and my movement. So Dawson, if you can actually feed me a couple balls cross court, I'm actually going to move and then I'm gonna catch the ball out in front of me, go ahead. So I'm actually gonna put the paddle on my left hand here, but I'm gonna try to move my feet in a way where I get that out in front, okay? Okay, so a um, couple things on that footwork. A lot of the times you're getting cross court dinks. Sometimes we may have to shuffle over this way. And a lot of times because the ball is being hit, you know, on the way out, I have to actually create space back in an angle like this. So I'm bringing my left foot in and then I'm bringing my right foot back like this. So slow that feed down a little bit, Dawson. And then we're gonna aim kind of in the corner here. And then I'm gonna work on um, getting that, that contact or my catch right here. Go ahead, okay? Okay, so it's just like that. So that's how I'm actually gonna work on it. One more. Okay, that's all right, one more time. Okay, so now that I get that contact point and you can see how far it is away from my body, now that I have that down, I'm gonna go over technique now. We really have to get on the side of the ball. So when we see really good topspin cross court dinkers, they're making sure that they drop their paddle head in a way that this paddle tip drops below the ball, but not only that, as they come up on the ball, you're gonna see them catch the side of it, right? Cause I'm going this way. So I'm actually going to be hitting it this way so that it can go cross court and have a little bit of pace on it. So now to show you that with the feet, dropping my paddle head, really getting on the side of the ball and then hitting it and brushing it up. All right, so last one here, I'm gonna make sure I move my feet and get on the outside of the ball so I can really put some pressure on my opponents here. Okay, all right. So key things there is that footwork, foot movement, getting that paddle and that contact out in front. And again, I'm brushing up on the ball. So it's really, really important that as a high level player that I have access to this shot and I can actually roll this shot out wide so that I can actually open up the court and open up attacking opportunities through the middle. Since we're talking about the aggressive topspin dink, we've created a completely free masterclass to teach you all about attacking from the non-volley zone line. It's packed with drills and specific insights that will help you attack your opponents like you've never been able to before. If you want free access, click the link in the description below or go to attackmasterclass.com. Now, let's get to shot number two. Okay, shot number two that you're definitely going to need as the right side player 
is a very consistent middle dink. So what do I mean by that? A lot of the times, let's say I'm rolling that ball out and Dawson actually puts it and pins it to my inside foot, my left foot. And this is a good play for him. So let's say I go over here, Dawson, you go to the middle, but you gotta have a really consistent inside dink from this left foot. So what's really important as I roll this ball out, now this really depends how much your left side player is taken over, but regardless, you are going to be taking some dinks from the inside of the court um, from your back end. So we wanna make sure that it's a consistent ball. So right now, um, Dawson, I'm just gonna thank you every ball over there and you're gonna thank me every ball aiming for my left foot here, okay? So we're gonna just practice that here, okay? Okay, so a little tip here for the inside foot dinks here and when you're trying to make this really, really consistent is where I actually place this ball, okay? A lot of times, let's say I do roll it out wide and then Dawson, you go middle on the next ball, right? That happens a lot and then a lot of players, what they do is they send it kind of, you know, cross court again. There's nothing wrong with this ball, by the way. Nothing wrong with this. Like, let's say this is the dinking pattern. I roll out to you and he sends it middle. A lot of players will send that ball back to the forehand side. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but the problem is it's to his strength. So if they, if they have a really good roll dink, then they're gonna push me out wide. So what I really recommend to players when this dink, you know, inside dink is played, is to give them back another one. Uh, or basically, you know, put the ball in their court and make them hit another inside dink from mine. So what it will look like here, let's say I roll it out here, boom, and then I go right to Dawson's inside foot. So at least that neutralizes what they can do on that shot. And then again, it puts the pressure on them for them to either put it over here, hit it out in front of them, or maybe feed it to my roll again, okay? So here we go. So we're gonna see that in action here. It's gonna go back. I'm gonna feed it there. Okay. So this dink is really important. And again, why we need to practice this is because we're going to be getting a lot of dinks on this inside. Really good players are going to be pinpointing that shot. And a lot of the times, you know, good players are gonna actually be rolling to you to that inside foot there. So we gotta make sure that we really, really have that dialed in. Couple ways to make sure, uh, or to make it easier for you to defend that ball is to lean in, right? Anytime that I see Dawson and he's wide over there, you're gonna go middle here, Dawson, right? I'm gonna lean in here so that I can try to take that, that ball out of the air, right? So I'm gonna be over here, I'm gonna try to take it out of the air. Again, if he hits good balls, those are gonna be tougher. But again, if I'm backing up, right, or if I'm not leaning in on that ball and I'm kind of forced into a really tough shot there, it's gonna be really, really difficult. So make sure that when that ball's out wide or when you think he's going to be hitting to that inside, you gotta make sure that you're leaning in. And if I can't reach it, I'm just gonna step back. Okay, so Dawson, you're going to hit me a couple balls here on the inside. I can't reach it, that's fine. I'm just gonna step back and then hit it over. So that one, uh, again, that one was a little bit of a reach, but I'm going to try to get it out of the air early like that or step back like that if I can't. And again, a good place to go as a right side player when I get this inside dink is to go right back to the inside so that I can force him to make the tough decision. All right, last but not least, we talked about the cross court top spin dink. We talked about handling that inside dink to your left foot. Now we're gonna talk about offense, the speed up, right? If we are aggressively hitting dinks out wide and we know how to neutralize and handle these inside dinks to our left foot, when we get opportunities to attack off the bounce, now we can apply offense and really keep the pressure on our opponents. So 
when I do get more dead dinks and what I'm looking for, I'm looking more for dinks that kind of sit up a little bit, that kind of land short into that non-volley zone. These are dinks I could actually create space with, kind of set up in a, in a way like my topspin dink. I'm gonna have this paddle tip down and I'm going to be hitting up on that ball using that pronation as I, you know, here's my forearm and I'm going, going to be turning it over like this and I'm going to, going to be finishing somewhere up here. So I'm going to be putting these all together. So Dawson, what we're going to do here, actually you're going to start with the ball. You're going to feed me here. I'm going to roll it out to you using my topspin dink. Then you're going to dink it middle. Then we're going to play it out. Okay. okay. Here we go. Okay, all right. So let's do that a couple more times. Again, Dawson's feeding me the wide dink first. I'm going to be rolling and then I'm gonna be hitting that inside dink and then we're gonna play it from there. Good. Okay, all right. So um, if you are moving your feet and you are creating offense and they know that you can actually send them out wide that actually opens up the middle of the court more for your speed ups. So this is why it's really important to have all these three shots in your arsenal. So again, obviously um, your opponents do have the opportunity to counter these speed ups, right? I actually can speed up kind of right at my opponent right down the line, but these are some patterns you should be watching out for and looking out for when you're practicing all these shots. Let's end it with one last one here, Dawson. Here we go. So go cross court. So I'm gonna cross inside foot to inside. Roll out again. Roll out again. Roll out again. Inside foot to inside. <laughs> okay. So work on those three shots, top spin dink, inside foot dink, learning how to neutralize and manage that, and then make sure you're working on your speed ups from the right side because it's really important on creating offense.